welcome to Ken Dodd's Christmas Cracker. It's our Naughty Ash Christmas Party. Here he is, standing at the microphone, frothing at the mouth. The man we tried to gift wrap, but his teeth stuck through the paper. The man who knows exactly where the parson's nose is, in the parson's handkerchief. It's Ken. Ticklemus folks. Do you know, this morning I was unwrapping my unbreakable baubles. They can't touch for it. And what a beautiful Christmas for sticking a boa constrictor down the front of the wife's tights and saying, how's this for snakes and ladders? <laughs> I love all the ceremonies of Christmas. I mean, this time of the year, in Oxford Street in London, you can see the trooping of the credit cards. And every... <laughs> How do you tell? How do you tell an Irish couple at Christmas? They're the ones pushing the crackers. This <laughs> Christmas... Christmas crackers. I said to the girlfriend, I said, let's exchange presents this Christmas. She said, well, certainly, she said, I always exchange yours. <laughs> How about something new this Christmas? A toy-operated battery. I... Have you seen the shops? It's unbelievable in the shops. You don't walk. You used to get carried along with the crowd. My braces broke, and it was 15 minutes before my trousers fell down. <laughs> One gift I got for Christmas was a word processor. Now I can type 200 words per minute. I'll give you a sample. Jingle forms, mix them the puzzle. Why didn't you? Parents, always hide the presents, always hide the kids' presents in a place where the children never go near, the bathroom. This. <laughs> we were so poor when we were kids. I mean, this is long before I worked for the BBC. I mean, we, we couldn't afford presents for the kids. We just told them that Santa Slay had failed its MOT. <laughs> It takes Father Christmas a whole year to get ready for this one big night. Sound a bit like my love life. This... <laughs> Every Christmas in Naughty Ash we play a traditional Italian game. A man goes round shoving spaghetti through your letterbox. It's called Pasta Parcel. It's... <laughs> Later on in the programme, I'll be reviewing the Irish pantomime, Humpty Goose. And... <laughs> Trump was arrested in Hyde Park this morning for asking people to give him a pound for a cup of tea. He told the police he realised the price was outrageous, but as it's Christmas, he was putting all his bags in one asket. I... <laughs> I wonder what all the villagers of Naughty Ash are doing for Christmas. There's only one way of finding out. We'll go out and ask them. What does Christmas mean to you, Gaffer? Oh, well, it's for the children, really, isn't it? Have you any children? Oh, yes, I have a, a little boy. And what does he want for Christmas? He wants one of those cars that run into things, then backs up and goes off in another direction. Oh, yes. He got the idea from having his mother drive him to school. <laughs> I'll pop into this posh lady's boutique. <laughs> I want to buy a present for my wife. Certainly, sir. Can I interest you in something in black lace or silk stockings? Oh, yes, but let's sort out the present first. <laughs> I'll have a word with this chap over here. Excuse me, sir, have you bought anything special this year? Oh, yes. I, I, I've just bought this train set. It's got two engines, a signal box, flashing lights and, and a real guard's whistle. Oh, that sounds wonderful. <laughs> I bet your little boy will enjoy playing with that. <laughs> will he? Oh, well, I'd better buy one for him as well, then, hadn't I? <laughs> Can I help you, sir? Well, yes, I'm looking for some Christmas cards. Oh, we've got a lovely selection here. Have you anything uh, very sentimental and romantic? Oh, look, here's a lovely one. It yeah. says, to the only girl I've ever loved. Oh, that sounds great. I'll take a dozen. <laughs> here we are at the Naughty Ass Off Licence. Hey, there. I'd like 16 cans of lager, 12 cans of bitter, 10 bottles of sherry, a case of vodka, 10 bottles of brandy, 4 bottles of gin, 12 bottles of whiskey, 2 cases of Italian wines, and a bottle of Bacardi. Is that it, sir? Yeah. I wouldn't bother about Christmas if it weren't for the kids. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Uh, will you be having a celebration drink this Christmas? Oh, yes, definitely. I'm having my usual. Oh, what's that? Cup of tea. 
Cup of tea? Cup of tea. I always have a cup of tea first thing in the morning, then I have a cup of tea before I go to work. Yes. I have a cup of tea mid-morning, and I have a cup of tea at lunchtime. Lunchtime. I have a cup of tea in the afternoon, and I have a jug of tea tea time, and a cup of cup of tea in the evening, and I always have pot of tea at supper time. I suppose you have a cup of tea before going to bed. Oh, no, I don't go to bed. Why not? I don't. <laughs> I believe you wanted to see me. Oh, yes, indeed, pretty lady from the theatre. <laughs> My cousin Ram Jam and I have decided to appear in your Christmas pantomime. Oh, I don't know about that. My wonderful cousin is preferring the furry animal in the chemist pantomime. The person to boot. My cousin would be a riot in the jack and the bean sprouts. <laughs> my, my cousin is learning all the comic songs. Oh, yeah, you should hear me sing the green, green madras of home. <laughs> Perhaps there is one part you might play in Robinson Crusoe. Could you be Man Friday? Oh, yes, I am a Man Friday, Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I am very hot stuff, like the curry. <laughs> or if it was Sinbad the Sailor, you'd probably be carried off by a big bird. Oh, that is pleasing me also. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, I will keep her chapatis warm. <laughs> And you do realise that men play women and women play men. Oh. You know, it's sort of um, bisexual. Oh, I'm not riding my bisexual anymore, no, no. no. Not since Jane came off and ruined my dirty. Oh, British pantomime, it's wonderful. It's a land of make-believe. Oh, like the job centre. <laughs> The great thing about Panto is that everything ends happily ever after, usually with the big wedding scene in Never Never Land. Oh, in that case, we are not interested. No, 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 not no, interested? No. But I thought you were mad keen. No, 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 not, not if you end up in Never Never Land. No, goodness me, no, we are not taking on the HP. No. <laughs> we will stay in this takeaway and we will defend ourselves from Alibaba and the 40 VAT men. <laughs> Do you know who I feel sorry for at Christmas, Ken? Santa's reindeer. Reindeer? Yes, I mean, he's all right, oh, Father Christmas. He's down the chimney in a nice warm house. But they aren't. Oh, no, they spend Christmas Eve parked on cold, sloping roofs. Ah, I so. Yes, I tell you, it's no joke being one of Father Christmas's reindeer. No joke at all. Oh, oh, this, this is ridiculous. How long is that white-whiskered old fool going to be down that flaming chimney? He must have been half an hour at this house already. <laughs> oh, I've never known it so cold. You look in agony. I am, I am. Oh, what's the matter? I think my fetlocks have frozen together. <laughs> oh, that can't be nice. Mind you, I should, I should be used to it by now. Same thing happened last Christmas. We were doing about 65 down the M1, and suddenly I got this stabbing pain. Whereabouts? Just below the Watford Gap. <laughs> oi, oi, I say, hey, you, behind, come on. Don't keep doing that. Well, what's he doing? It's that reindeer at the back of me. His nose is freezing. <laughs> I say, huh? you've uh, not paid much attention to me during this trip. Well, well, I'm, I'm tired, I'm tired. I went to a stag party the other night. <laughs> You noticed that I'm different to you, aren't I? I mean, I wear makeup. Oh, that doesn't mean a thing these days, pal. No, look, surely you can tell. Huh? Well, give, give us a clue. Doe, a deer, a female deer. You're not Julie Andrews, are you? <laughs> hey, give, give over, will you? Look, he's has it again behind me. Look, pack it in, will you, at the back? Well, that's Rudolph. He's got a red nose. He'll have a black eye if he doesn't stop doing that. <laughs> Why does Father Christmas spend so long at each house? Oh, he doesn't do it deliberately. But you see, everywhere he goes, they leave him a glass of wine and a piece of cake. By three in the morning, he'd be paralytic. And he gets all the presents mixed up. Take last year. He had some bath cubes and a bottle of perfume for Joan Collins. Where do you think he delivered them? I have no idea. The Archbishop of Canterbury. <laughs> poor Archbishop. Never mind the poor Archbishop. Poor Joan Collins. Why, what did she get? Three pairs of wife fronts and a new pulpit. <laughs> I wish he'd hurry up. What can he be doing? Oh, and he might have fallen asleep in a nice comfy armchair. Oh, he wouldn't. He has done before. I'll never forget Christmas Eve 1978. He had one too many, dropped off, and left us waiting for four hours on the top of a two-up, two-down roof in Miles Platting. Hey, <laughs> listen, he's coming. Uh, he's 
so tuppy. Oh, Struth, he's stoned. Look, paralytic. Look what he's got in his sack. It's full of them when he went in. It's 1969 all over again. I thought you said it was 1978. That was when he fell asleep in the armchair. He hasn't been asleep this time. Far from it. I'm not with you. You will be in a minute when he opens that sack. <laughs> Come on, me beauty. Give us a kiss. <laughs> oh, you naughty Santa Claus. Now, where did you say you were taking me? Fairyland, love. Fairyland. He's not taking her to Fairyland, is he? Of course he's not. It's 1969 all over again. Come on, lads. Get galloping. It's a mucky weekend in Morecambe. <laughs> Here's a beautiful Christmas song of my Yuletide warble when a child is born. A ray of hope flickers in the sky. A tiny star lights up way up high. All across the land dawns a brand new morn. This comes to pass. When a child is born A silent wish Sails the seven seas The winds of change Whisper the trees And the walls of doubt Crumble, tossed and torn This comes to pass When a child is born a rosy dawn settles all around You get the feel you're on solid ground For a spell or two no one seems forlorn This comes to pass when a child is born This happens because the world is waiting, waiting for one child. Black, white, yellow, no one knows. But a child that will grow up and turn tears to laughter, hate to love, war to peace, and everyone to everyone's neighbor. And misery and suffering will be words to be forgotten forever. A ray of hope flickers in. The sky, a tiny star lights up way up high. All across the land dawns a brand new morn. This comes to pass when a child is born. It's all a dream, an illusion now. Must come true sometime soon, somehow. All across the land dawns a brand new morn. This comes to pass when a child is born. This comes to pass when a child is born. Better pay a Christmas visit to Miss Golightly, because she's a very old-fashioned girl. <clears throat> she says her prayers every night. Amen. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's... Pop in the office. Good gracious, it's the abominable snowman. Oh, don't come in, boss. You mustn't see me like this. Let me hide behind the filing cabinet. Oh, give me a start then, Miss Golightly. How long have you been wearing men's underpants? These are my super deluxe cosy warm thermals with fleecy linings that just stop Jack Frost nipping at my extremities. He wouldn't dare. Anyway, it's not that cold in the office. Oh, they're not for the office, boss. I'm off to Austria skiing. Skiing? mean trundling along on two planks of wood? That's right, boss. Oh, I love it. The thrill of everybody hurtling downhill together to what could be impending disaster. Sounds a bit like this show. Ha! <laughs> 
take those long johns back. They're not long johns. They are. My granddad had a pair like that. I bet they're the ones with the trap door at the front, too. <laughs> no, they're special thermals. All the trendy people wear them under their pants. I wonder why some of those men are walking funny. <laughs> I never thought of you as a skier. Oh, it was awful at first. I stood up, fell down, stood up, fell down, but I said to myself, I'm going to go down that hill on my skis or bust. You'll find the skis a lot less painful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't mean that, boss. Do you have a good instructor? Yes, my Uncle Horace. Your Uncle Horace? What does he know about skiing? Oh, he's a world champion. <laughs> didn't know that. Oh, yes, he had this special ski suit. On the back it said, Horace Go Lightly, world champion. Oh, I see, in case of accidents. Yes. If he fell over, whoever picked him up would know who he was. Yes. And, and if he fell on his back? <laughs> he had something written on the front, too. I think I know. <laughs> yeah, please turn over. Oh, I thought so, yeah. <laughs> well, you really are very brave, Hilary. I mean, I'd be scared stiff of bumping into a tree. Well, I was terrified at first, seeing all those trees in front of me. But I had a brainwave. You did? Yes. I turned round and I skied downhill backwards. <laughs> <laughs> and that stopped you being frightened? Yes, you see, the trees that were in front of me before were now behind me. I <laughs> Hey, up there, Kenny lad, I'm really greatly faint to see thee. By Joe, yeah. it's Lanky. Lanky Akringthorpe. How are you diddling, Lanky? Yeah, I'm bow-fagged. Right jiggered, I'm. I could do with something put her through me. Well, look, tell you what. Yeah. Let's have a drink and forget all about it. Yeah, lad. That is all right for burning on chips. Shut that and it'll blow their belly button off. <laughs> anyway, up, I've had a boatload. Really? Aye. I was with me old cocker, Willie Eckers, like. Oh, aye. Ooh, hey, we've stopped some ale from going sour, I tell thee. Ah. <laughs> We've given it some stick, me and Willie, who is a retail gun. He's no clock on him, you know, his legs is holler. You don't say. Ah, ah, he's, he's gone warm. Ah, oh. hey, we're eat gradely meeting there, Kenny, but I better be going. Ah. Hey, I'm, I'm to start a belting little job tomorrow morning. What, I beg your pardon? Ah, the cringe. I, I've got tissue paper ears. I says I've got a new job. Oh, you've got a new job? Ah. Yeah. What is it? I'm a British Rail Station announcer. <laughs> Christmas is a time for ghost stories. I remember my first night at that bleak, miserable house set in the middle of Dartmoor. It was midnight. The candle in my room began to flutter. And then, then, I heard it. The sound of chains being dragged along the corridor. Doors opened and closed as this terrifying clanging noise Progressed nearer and nearer. It was as though a soul in torment was searching, searching for something he couldn't find. Whatever it was, it stopped. Outside my door, I watched in horror as the apparition stepped into my room and uttered its unearthly cry. Where's my shit? <laughs> At this very moment, mums and dads all over the country are saying to their children, put that damn cardboard box away and play with the toy we paid £89 for, will you? <laughs> Christmas has many fond memories for me. You know, I can always remember my granddad plucking the turkey for hours and hours. He still couldn't get a tune out of it. <laughs> My girlfriend bought me a very nice present for Christmas, a dictionary. I thought it was a poem about everything. <laughs> British Rail is going to give all the commuters a joke book to keep them amused while they're waiting for trains. It's called a timetable. <laughs> I... Did you know? Did you know that in Finland at Christmas, men jump naked into the snow? Husbands come home unexpectedly there, you know, as well. <laughs> The finest way to find out about a town or a city is to read the local newspaper. Here you are. Yep. The Naughty Ass Examiner. It says here, Bernard Matthews has managed to cross an elephant with a turkey. He doesn't know what he's come up with, but if you want to stuff it, it'll cost you a fortune in stage none. <laughs> News item. A little boy in Wigan accidentally ate a packet of crayons yesterday. Ate a packet of crayons. His parents are waiting for him to show his true colours. <laughs> Personal column. Hi there. What turns you on? Do you like black rubber, masks, the wet look, chains and canes? If so, contact the Civil Service Cycling and Skin Diving Holiday Club. 
Old man with pacemaker wishes to meet young female raver with battery charger. <laughs> Light bulb tester seeks girl for on and off relationship. <laughs> Sugar daddy looking for single lady. Must be refined. <laughs> Christmas is a time for burying the hatchet, usually in the little lad's drum kit next door. <laughs> <laughs> Kenneth, my dear boy. Hello, Vicar. That's a very smart new dog collar. Yes, a, a present from the spinster of the parish. Oh, yes. Pity she didn't take the name Fido off, though, first, didn't she? <laughs> never mind, never mind. She does many good works. She occasionally irons my surplus. Ah, oh, what a turn on that must be. <laughs> Yes, well, uh, I've come here in a dilemma. Oh, you shouldn't have bought one of those Japanese cars, you know, Vic. Look, my dilemma is, I have everything for the village Christmas party, but alas, I have no tree. No tree? No Christmas tree? You mean you've got nowhere to hang your baubles? Sadly, no. And the stores are now barred and shuttered. Well, we must have a tree. I mean, wh where's the fairy going to sit? In the same pew he uses every Sunday, no, I fear. No, I mean, I mean the Christmas tree fairy. Well, I'm relying on your ingenuity to come up with a tree. Leave it to me, Becca. There must be an all-night tree shop round here somewhere. I'll just leaf through the green pages. <laughs> it's a joke. <coughs> I know, I know. I'll turn up the M6. I'll burn up the motorway in my 4x4 turbocharged cone crusher. I'll nip over the border to Bonnie Scotland and pinch, uh, <coughs> borrow uh, a fine fur Christmas tree. They'll never miss one. Here goes. <laughs> Here we are, Gretna Green. Are you looking for a tree? No, I called to the garage down the road. No, honestly, I'm... <laughs> Mr. MacJock, I'm just touring. You're sure you're not a tree poacher, cos they're all counted, you know. Perhaps you'd like to tie your nuptials around our anvil. No, not until the warmer weather. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a fine selection of off-the-peg brides for Christmas. Now, take a look at Miss MacDonald here. By Jove, she's a big girl. Yeah. I'm Flora. Oh, I can see why they call it Flora. She spreads easily. <laughs> I'll have you know I'm a model. What for? Oil platforms? Uh, <laughs> perhaps you could, uh, Flora, perhaps you could point me in the direction of the tree, of the tree, tree, the tree, tre tremendous scenery. I feel the need to be sapling, uh, to sampling the delights of Scotland. Uh, tell me, do the salmon run round here? Eh, uh, they have to, laddie. There's no buses. <laughs> That's a mad <mark> joke. <laughs> uh, look, is there any wooded area of interest where I could visit? I fought William. I'll bet he lost by about three falls and a submission. <laughs> I still think the Sassenach is up to no good. Remember, laddie, no tree rustling. No, no. You're not allowed to grab things in the Grampians. All right, well, who's going to stop me? What about the Forestry Commission? I'll take it, 10%. Look, I, I don't want any of those Scottish pound notes. Here we are, further up the glens. Now, here's a fine sample of Scottish fare. Oh, what a beautifully polished, smooth trunk. Just my luck. I haven't brought my saw with me. No, man, I'll have to use my teeth. If Bugs Bunny can do it, so can I. I'll have to get back to Nottyash. I'll miss the party. Welcome home, Kenneth. What a wonderful tree. By Joe, the party's in full swing, isn't it? I'll just stick another Yule log onto the fire. Put me down, you silly arm. Oh, I'm sorry, Lord Charles. <laughs> oh, there you are, Mr. Dodge. We're all waiting to start our party games. First, we're playing Truth or Consequences. You know, where if you can't answer a question, you pay a ferret. I mean, a forfeit. <laughs> all right, you're first. Are you ready, then? I'm the MC. The question is, if mince pies were full stops, how many semicolons are there in the Kama Sutra? Uh, uh, um... Oh, uh, tell me in a bell. Do you know or don't you? No. Are you ready to pay a forfeit? Oh, yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> yes. Stand under this mistletoe, yes. then. Yes. I should warn you, it could be a wet one. Never mind. I'm ready, Nora. <laughs> All right, everybody. <laughs> Grab his leg. No, no, put me down. No, help! Hey, what, what, what's up with forfeits this? No, no! You've got to do ten lengths of the Naughty Ash Frozen Pond. One, two, no, oh. three! Oh, 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 I'm going blue all over. Oh, 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 I'm worse still. It's green algae. He's just grabbing legs. Oh, no, 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 algae. Happy Christmas, everybody. Tatty bye! Tatty bye! You'll be listening to Ken Dodd's Christmas Cracker, starring Ken Dodd. With Colin Edwin, Sibby Jones, Adam Day, Michael McLean and Jennifer Stanton. 
The writers were Colin Brown, Roy Dixon, Ron McDonald, John Pye, Barry Reeves and Ken Rock. The music was provided by Brian Fitzgerald, Stanley Clark and Tim Marriott and the show was produced in Manchester by Mike Cray.